Hello from Clio 2016. I'm here with Dr. Helena Vokovic, Stanford University. In your plenary presentation on quantum nanophotonics, you shared how modern nanofabrication and optical design techniques allow you to localize photons to sub-wavelength volumes. What has allowed you to see what was previously hidden from view? Uh, localization of light into subwavelength volumes increases field intensities and uh, strength of the light matter interaction and that has enabled us to see very exciting effects uh, such as photon blockade and tunneling that I have been discussing here uh, that happen at very high speeds. You can filter individual photons, individual particles of light or two photon states completely change statistics of input light uh, at the output. Um, we have also observed many other effects uh, including these entangled states of light and matter where you cannot talk anymore about light and matter separately but only about entangled states and we have measured how they uh, how long they live um, we have also probed them uh, in many different ways um, and all of these actually effects would not really be possible without these nanofabrication techniques and small structures that localize light very strongly and uh, keep it stored for uh, decent amounts of time Attendees here at Clio are naturally hid are interested in advanced optics inside the quantum world. How will your research today lead to new applications in commu computing, communications, and sensing? Oh, there are uh, many possible applications uh, of these effects. We are not interested only in probing fundamental science, but also using um, these newly discovered effects to make better devices for um, optical interconnects in computers, for communications, for biosensors. Um, as an example, uh, as a result of the same fundamental effects that I was just describing, we can build the devices uh, for optical communications, such as uh, modulators or switches uh, that uh, operate at autojoule energies, way lower than where they are today, and they operate also at uh, very high speeds, tens of gigahertz. Uh, so that's really a new platform uh, for building future high-speed, low-energy uh, devices. Fantastic. We have a large number of students here at Clio 2016. In your position at Stanford, you have the opportunity to work with students and advise them on various career paths. What advice would you offer them based on your own experiences in optics and photonics? Um, I advise my own students to diversify their portfolio while they're in the group to try different projects uh, uh, and in addition to main, their main PhD thesis topic get involved with other types of projects. Sometimes it happens that a side project becomes a project of someone's main interest. Um, I've also advised them to probe uh, different career possibilities. Someone comes to the group uh, interested in pursuing a career in academia and by the end of their grad school decides that they would like to work in industry or um, they would like to uh, work for a funding agency or as venture capitalist, right? So it's very important to get to exposed to all of these career options early on uh, because uh, you're making decisions for um, that would influence most of your life, right? Um, so that's very important. And, and finally, it's also very important that uh, a student uh, enjoys both the project and, and topic that they work on, um, uh, but also enjoys um, specific day-to-day uh, -day life in a career path that they choose. So my, my advice would be uh, talk, uh, go out to conferences, talk with people from industry, from academia, um, and explore as many possible paths as you can. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much. Signing off from Clio 2016.